I first shot it, hit big boy in the head. I thought he was dead. I'm like, damn, he's dead. Main video 718. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. You got something to say? Let's have a conversation. Dwayne Keefe D. Davis, accused of ordering the murder of Tupac Shakur, wants out of jail on bail. But prosecutors say they have him on jail calls talking about possibly killing a witness. So will Keefe D. be released? And just how tough of a gangster was he? A former Copton gang cop is here to tell us. Dwayne Keefe D. Davis faces a murder charge in Las Vegas. He's accused of ordering the murder of rapper Tupac Shakur back in 1996. We've told you before that Tupac, Death Row Records CEO Suge Knight, and others jumped Keefe D's nephew, Orlando Anderson, after the Mike Tyson fight at the MGM Grand on a night in September of 1996. Keefe D, according to prosecutors, and his own words for that matter, wasn't having it. He's accused of ordering the murder of Tupac Shakur and giving his nephew the gun to carry it out. Keefe D, Orlando Anderson, Terrence Brown, and DeAndre Smith were all riding in a white Cadillac when they pulled up next to the BMW Suge Knight was driving and Orlando Anderson fired. Keefe D wrote about this in his book, Compton Street Legend, and he's talked about that night in several interviews. They was actually, y'all was actually waiting at 662 for Tupac and Orlando can fight, right? Yeah. Tell me about that, because Orlando actually wanted to fight Tupac, right? Yeah, you're going to get his ass knocked out. So I laying at hands. One punch. Oh, for real? He had hands? Oh, hell yeah, like God. Yeah. So tell me about that. Orlando saying he wanted to fight Tupac and have a heads up with him. We just, uh, I was going to tell Shirley, let him get down. That's all. He's just going to beat his ass. Now, it's important to point out that Keefe D thought he had immunity, but he didn't, since he'd told this story to police back in the mid-2000s as part of a proffer in his drug case. Keefe D is asking a judge to let him out of jail on bail. He says he's 60 now, he's in remission for cancer, and isn't a danger to the community. But prosecutors are opposing that request. They say Keefe D is on jail calls, furious with witnesses who testified at the grand jury against him, and his son is talking about a green light on their side. A green light, prosecutors say, is an authorization to kill. And the feds are even providing resources to one witness so he could move. So how big of a gangster was Keefe D in all actuality? I talked to former Compton gang unit officer Bobby Ladd, author of Once Upon a Time in Compton, to find out. I was had many, many, many contacts with Keefe D. I say I grew up with him because I was only 23 years old when I started and he was a few years younger than me, but I started and I watched this guy grow up in the neighborhood. We used to chase him around in the Southside Crypt area. We even arrested him at one time, you know? So it's like, I saw him become this uh, start, you know, just selling narcotics as a street little dealer. And I saw him become this huge narcotics dealer that he ended up selling narcotics all the way across the country. So um, I watched him become a shot caller within the Southside Crips gang. So. so tell me, how big of a drug dealer was Keefe D? Some people think that he has kind of bragged uh, and overstated his importance or his kind of level that he reached in that drug trade. I mean, was he a, as big of a drug dealer as he claims to be? He really was, he was the real deal. Um, the reason I know this, because Compton, like I say, was a small city and we worked the gang unit and we were inundated with shootings and murders. We didn't have the resources or the manpower to go after somebody that's selling uh, narcotics uh, across the country like Keefe D was. So during my time in the gang unit, I was hit up numerous times by uh, FBI task force and DEA task force that wanted to go after Keefe D. So they would tell me what he was doing. And so we would exchange information. We'd give him, uh, you know, all the people he's hanging around with and his associates, we'd exchange information. And they told us way back then that, hey man, this guy's running uh, major kilos and PCP all the way across the United States. So he really was the real deal. Lad testified at the grand jury as a gang expert about life in Compton and what happened after Tupac was murdered. Now, the night Tupac was shot, um, 
my partner Tim and I, we were on our days off and we get a call from our boss, Reggie Wright Sr. And he tells us about the shooting and he goes, hey man, we're here in the Southside Crips. That's the information I'm getting and, and the war is coming back to Compton. So you guys just, just beware, get ready because it's coming back. And sure enough, a couple days later, we had our first shooting. We were on our days off, but uh, Reg, Reggie had called us in. One of the OGs from Southside Crips was shot and a 10 year old little girl got shot in the crossfire. She was in critical condition. So he said, hey man, you guys need to get your butts down here so these guys see you driving around the city, right? When we got there that day, it was kind of eerie because Compton's usually bustling, man. People everywhere, people at the parks, everything. And we were driving around and there was nobody out. I mean, it was weird. We were like looking at each other, go, man, these these people know the streets talk, you know. These we were driving around and we didn't see anybody out at the time. It was kind of weird. So we knew something was coming, and sure enough, it did. Lad also told me they knew days after Tupac was shot, who was responsible. We had a informant call us that two days later, right? The Cadillac was already gone, so. On this street on Alondra, there was a um, car shop where they repaired cars and a lot of crips and hung out there. It was a known place. We got a call from our informant and they said that uh, Gary Monk and I think it was Orlando brought this car into their place and it had a bullet hole in the back, right? And they repaired it and let him go, but our informant didn't call us till two days later. So we were pissed about that, right? So we were never able to track down that, that Cadillac with supposedly a bullet hole in it because I guess uh, Untree was supposedly shot back at the Cadillac after they shot Tupac and Suge in Vegas. So if they knew all of this, why was no one arrested for 27 years? Lad says the answer is simple. No one was cooperating. You know, you have to have people who are there that's going to ID somebody, you know? so. I always put it on Suge Knight because he was the one that was there. And I believe that he saw EPD, you know, they grew up together and Suge Knight's the kind of person he already said, it. Hey, let the police do it. But he could have said it. He could have told the truth 27 years ago and we probably wouldn't be going through this now. Um, that's what I, I just put it on Suge Knight because gang cases are really, really hard. I, I, investigated thousands of gang cases and they're hard to prove, man, because nobody wants to be involved. 